You're listening to Were You Still Talking? Corrugated cardboard all, right. all over the wall. Corrugated cardboard packing materials, but not right. egg crates, as someone claimed it was. No. Okay. It would be like alien space eggs if that were Alien the space egg crates. Yes. That could be what they are. All right, today on the show we have Callie... Oh, I forgot to ask you how you pronounce your last name. Cardis. Cardis. Callie yeah. Cardis, who is not only a theater geek, that's how I know her, but also a uh, marketing... Uh, where was it? Dynamic marketing manager. And a... Uh, does photography, graphic design, social media projects. Uh, author of 100 Ways to Live Greener in 2013. Has a great article about um, why people should hire theater geeks. Uh, that's on your website, right? It is. At Cali, right. CaliCardis.com. CaliCardis.com. So thanks for coming over. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You bet. I'm um, so flattered and excited that you asked me to be on your podcast. And I'm so glad you came on the podcast. This makes it legit. Right. Now I'm 100% legit. I am. I bring the legitima- legitimacy. It's true. In most relationships. <laughs> You're the one. <laughs> I'm, I'm it. <laughs> okay, so let's see. What was I going to ask you about? What is a dynamic mar- marketing manager? That's a, a marketing term I use for myself. And the idea being that I consider myself pretty scrappy and I can do most aspects of marketing, anything from running an event to creating web content to managing social media to print and design. Um, And I'm pretty agile. I tend to do things on the fly a lot. I kind of like being spontaneous in my work. I, I like the pressure cooker environment awesome so. that's awesome so how uh how many companies are you working for now right now just the oh, one <laughs> so okay i was confused but you do do you also do uh independent stuff just do stuff on your own or i i like to think that i am just ready for independent stuff i'm not actively doing freelance work or consulting but i have in the past and if anybody wants is interested in working with me. I like to just be ready to do that in case something comes up because people do occasionally ask. I'll be at a networking event or um, I do. I like to speak sometimes at business events or do workshops. Um, I used to teach at Lane Community College and occasionally people would ask me if I would be available for consulting. So I just like to be ready. Well, it. you better be ready because, you know, <laughs> okay. once the million listeners... But right. hear this podcast, start calling you up. There, it's You're going to have to get a new nonstop. number. Stop! I know. It's, it's time probably to switch to an Oregon number anyway. Oh, yeah, that was Seattle. I almost didn't answer, but then I thought, okay, someone is expected here. I guess I should answer this. Do you answer all your phone calls? No. Me neither. No, I especially don't answer the Seattle area phone calls because I don't actually know any. Seattle locals anymore. You don't know. <laughs> so and if I do, they are already C- saved as my contacts. So I all my spam calls actually come from Washington because I kept my Seattle number. So. Oh right. So they want. But you I to do think answer. They're in Seattle. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I do answer most of the Oregon calls because um, I am a mini hats wearing volunteer at the very little theater here in Eugene. As I'm familiar with. Yes, that's where we met. Yeah, let's get into that. It's totally. I'm, I was reading your theater resume here, which has quite a few things on it, but I noticed there was something there, a uh, trial of Ebenezer Scrooge. Wasn't that one of the best plays you were ever in? I think it was probably the greatest show that's ever been done. <laughs> greatest show ever. Ever. That's right, I was in it. And then... And especially the performance by of Jacob Marley by a very distinguished gentleman. Very distinguished. Yes. That's what I usually go by, very distinguished gentleman. Yes. And uh, who time... didn't actually show up to all performances if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, that's right. I got very very sick. Yeah. And someone who was going to be Scrooge filled in. 
There's, there's on a, a lot of on drama. Zero notice. There's a lot of drama <laughs> around that drama. Oh, really? Oh, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I got sick and missed the drama. Well, no, no actually, it. by that time, he was, you know, apologetic and. Oh, I, I see himself. what you mean. But, uh, but just in general, yeah, there was a lot of Because our Scrooge dropped that. out. Yes. Uh, he, he dropped yeah. out because he was sad about Trump getting elected. Who? And this, this somebody. Yeah, we don't talk about Certain There's elections. so many people talking about that subject that I'm trying to steer away from it. I don't, but, I don't want to talk <laughs> about it. I just meant to say but, that it was yes. a catalyst. It was. That's, it affected. It, that's what we all thought, but I didn't know. I really didn't know. The real truth behind the whole, the whole thing. That that was how it was communicated to me. Okay, me too. And the, but the the filling Scrooge was uh, pretty spectacular. He was, but he was very different. He was Ve- a lot, uh, very different. We went from a very yeah. sort of gentle, subdued Scrooge, very vulnerable Scrooge, to a very explosive, high energy Scrooge. Which just made it easier for me, quite honestly. Yes. <laughs> it made it more complicated for me because I was the past. I was Christmas past. Uh huh. And I, you know, s- was supposedly having the more tender moments of the show. <laughs> but uh, but we made it fun. That was a great show. It was a great show. I had the time of my life. And it's so awesome that you do so much work for the theater because everyone should. Well, everyone you know, should. somebody's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be done. And someone should give the very little theater what four million dollars. Four million dollars would that? be great. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyone we actually almost have a million. That's awesome. So so you only need just anybody thinking about you know giving their money to a good cause. We're working very hard to get this remodel done on our fifty-year-old building that is almost literally falling apart at this point in time. I'm the facilities manager, and I've had to call. The plumber, the electrician, and the roofer in the last two weeks. Oh. <laughs> and, oh, and, oh, and, it's just and sad. Bimar heating and sheet metal. <laughs> <laughs> Our HVAC got crushed in the snowstorm. Oh, in the snow. Yeah. Oh, geez. And now we have a leak in the roof. So. Our, our embarrassing snowstorm. Eugene <laughs> got a foot of snow and it destroyed us. It destroyed us. <laughs> People from What's Michigan up? laugh. With the trees here, they're just... They're, they're not ready for they're snow. Weak. They are weak <laughs> trees. We have weak in the pathetic. trees. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's entirely pathetic. <laughs> oh, so you were asking about the music, which I showed you the the little intro to the show, which will probably be on this show too. That was yeah. uh, a buddy of mine in uh, who now lives in Ashland, but at the time we did that, lived in L.A. And we went down, and I jammed on that, and completely forgot about it. And he recently. Uh, found it and dusted it off and put a lot more s- sweetness on it and sent it to me and said it was okay if I used it. So, yeah. That's really cool. It's fun. It's also I've, fun to look back and go, wow, I could play drums back then. That was cool. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? I've always been a musical failure. I <laughs> well, I te- dropped out of strings in fourth grade. and I took a, When I moved here, I took a year of lessons, of guitar lessons. Oh, cool. Um, and I, the best I ever did after 14 months of playing the guitar was I could play one sublime riff and I could play the uh, free falling uh, Tom Petty song. <laughs> All right. Well, that's something. I always knew that was a simple song. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> it's kind of pathetic. <laughs> I sing all right, though. I'll just use my voice as my instrument. Use your voice. I, I've always said everyone should play drums. I think everyone should have an old drum set in their garage because it's very yeah. therapeutic. Yeah. I'd be into that. Oh, I forgot. I was going to have us do some actor warm-ups because oh. we're both actors. You got any good warm-ups we could do? I mean, we have to do seated warm-ups. I know that's yeah. Oh Well, my director in my last show had some fun warm-ups. She liked to do... So the she would start us off by just exercising all the um, uh, kind of the sounds in the different parts of your mouth. So you start with tip of the tongue and you do ta 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 ta
And then you move then, to the back of the throat and you do ka 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 You could also say Albrecht. And you get back there as well. <laughs> Oliver, what is it? Albrecht. Albr- oh, you. I had, I had German. Albrecht. In, I had German in junior high, and my teacher was always trying to get me to pronounce my name. <laughs> Mr. Albrecht. <laughs> Mr. Albrecht. And then she would speak German the entire class as if we were going to learn. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Did Very not work. much. But I should be doing those warm ups before I start a podcast. Very good. Then I would, yeah. And then you it's got the, the tongue twisters. Mm-hmm. Like, My favorite warm up though was um, it was a vocal warm up I learned in choir, and you you kind of put your hands open face like you're holding a basket like your head's a basketball, mm-hmm. and you you envision your soft palate kind of opening up like there's a a balloon in the back of your throat, and you just you take your arms and lift them up and just go. It's kind of like a yawn, like a big yawn. That's great. That's a good one. And it just helps open your soft palate and get some air in the mm -hmm. back. And that was always kind of my favorite singing warm up. Yeah, that's good. My, uh, I was always impressed uh, watching Mad Men one time. He was warming up for a speech, and I forget the actress name, but he said he did. Uh, John Hamm. John Hamm. That's him. He's my. You've heard of John Hamm, right? Yeah, but I like him better when he's funny. And he did red leather, yellow leather. Yes, classic. And he did it so fast. Yeah. Like, wow, no wonder he's good. How fast I can mean, you do it? Uh, red leather, yellow leather, about not even that fast. I can't do it. Here's red how, leather, yeah. yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Red, red leather. leather. So yellow, yellow. he was at I least twice that fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard one. It's That's hard. A, it's a hard I is that why they call it a tongue twister? A tongue twister. So how? Yes. When did you start acting? When did you get a, When my did you become first, a theater geek? My first gig was actually I was in kindergarten. I remember it. My teacher used to read us, you know, stories because we're five, and she read us this book called The White Mitten, and. Um, and then she always had us reenact. So she would read us the story, and then she would give us all parts and have us act out. And then she'd read the story again, and we would act it out. And she sent a note home with my mother to tell her about the local children's play. Oh, that awesome. That was coming up. Um, and looking back now, I was thinking, you know, I was probably just a real high-energy pain in the ass, and she felt like that would be a good outlet for which me. Which it is. <laughs> which it, is, it, it is how That's most so true. theater kids end up in theater. <laughs> that is how a <laughs> lot of theater people end up in theater. Yeah, yeah and so my first play was um, Charlotte's Web. I was a gosling. Cool. And, cool. and then yeah. I did the children's play in my little tiny hometown every year mm-hmm. until... I think eighth grade. And then I got to do a big girl play. My first big girl play was, uh, or adult play was um, Artichoke by Joanna Glass. Um, I don't know that one. It's quirky. Mm. And, and actually, what I like, my favorite thing about it now is that the Very Little Theater did it in, in 1984, which is the year I was born. Oh, you're so kidding. Like my first adult play, and now the theater that I'm on the board for did the same play. That's awesome. I thought you were a young person. It's it's always nice young. to talk to young people. <laughs> <laughs> you kids <laughs> in you your kids, theater. You kids in your theater. <laughs> Later, I'm going to ask you about social media. Oh, I have Let's... many things to say about <laughs> social media. Excellent. Excellent. Um, oh, yeah, but while we were on theater, I wanted yeah. to ask you about you are going to be uh, assistant director for something called Harvey. Yes, it's awesome. a classic. Yes, it's, it's one of my favorite plays. So Absolute favorite. You, you can precast that, right? No. Damn it. Damn. We at the Very Little Theater damn. do not believe in precasting. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. against policy. Uh-huh. I know all about that. <laughs> I know. Uh, I won't it's say a, anything. That is, uh, <laughs> is a tender, tender subject for me. And I will. all I will say about it is mm. that one of the reasons I am so active at the organization level is because I want to build a more fair and just theater society. Which is a good uh, ambition. 
It's a very yes. good ambition. I was I was actually surprised to find out that sometimes things are saying kind of precast. But um yeah. The problem yeah, is yeah. it's always I, it's like a he the, said she said situation where you can't you know, they deny it. They don't admit that there's precasting. I would happening. never admit it. Right. Never. Well, also some of the people that were precast that I know about had worked on the play for a long, long, Which play are you long about? time. Time stands still. Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> so that one, yes, that one was precast. And so that was done in our black box, which is also where Scrooge was. And oh, uh, now I, you, learned I didn't know it was called the black box. It's called Stage Left. Oh, because it's a but, black box theater. But it's a black box theater. So. Right. I, I call it, I call it a black box because theater people usually know what that means. It's a small space, you know, less than a hundred seats. And I learned just this year that apparently our bylaws allow precasting for stage left shows, just not main stage shows. But I would like to change that. Oh as well, that's well. awesome. I mean, it's awesome that it's in the bylaws that I don't allow that they don't allow precasting. But a lot of you know, I've been to those auditions. I could. It was Directors clear. It was clear to people. me that, yeah, and they do. And um, the more work I do, I still am mostly an actor. I've been, uh, I've been offered to direct for a little series I was doing, and I realize, watching directors and talking to directors, that it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it, it does seem very unfair, but if you've got you know somebody in there that you've worked with and you know, oh, this guy's going to get the this guy's going to show up, he's going to know his he's freaking gonna learn lines. His lines, he's, he, gonna he's going to learn his I lines. He, you know, yeah. yeah then it's it's it would be hard. It's hard to resist. It's basically hard to resist. Yeah. Going, oh, I've never seen this guy before. Yeah, he's a little bit better, but I've never seen him in my life. Right. He, you know, he might smell when he Who shows up. He might. Yeah. And I get we it. That I do get it, and <laughs> especially after having. My first directing experience last fall. Uh huh. How was that? Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's I've awesome. I loved it. It was so, so much more creatively, creatively satisfying than I had anticipated, and and being able to have a vision for a show and be able to look at it at every angle and give the actor feedback and have the actor take that in and mix it with whatever talent and emotion they're bringing to the table already. It's a real satisfying experience. It's, I really enjoy Yeah, it. you have all the power. It, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because... I mean, I don't like to think of it that way, and, and, it's, but it's, you know, it's your, your actors are like, if you're painting a picture... You're doing the outline, you know, the, the the script is like the outline, like the pencil sketch. And then the actors are like all the paints. And then the director is the one filling in all the color and and how it all works together. It's, but you said you never did drugs in high school. I did not okay, do drugs <laughs> in high school. I'm just a real big fan a very great, for the metaphor. That was a great description. Great description. Uh, the, thing, the thing I like as an actor... I've done theater, and strangely enough, I've done more, um, I call it video, not really film, but camera work mm -hmm. uh, in the last few years, mainly because it's really hard to do theater when your back is messed up, and my back has been messed up. So, Oh, yeah, that uh, is hard. It's t physical. Acting is very physical. And if, yes. if you can go home after a day of acting, you can kind of recover. But in theater, you've got no, <laughs> there's no recovery. But uh, It's what, exhausting. It's exhausting. I mean, any, any time. I, I forget. I went to, uh, um, I've been cast for a photo shoot. And I thought, oh, this will be, so, you know, photo shoot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Not until 14 I, hours later. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it was only a couple hours. But they, uh, when I, it's, um. It takes place in the 1700s, and it's a little uh, story. It's for a storybook. So oh. I get to the thing, and it's like, okay, here's what you're doing. Okay, act that out. I mean, no, yeah. you know, there's no script or anything. Just, right. just do that. I'm Go. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's hard, but it's a lot of fun. And, yeah. Um, but still, I was so much. It, it wore me out far more than I figured it would because I just thought, oh, I'll just show up. Nothing to it. It's different. You have to be aware of. 
your body, your mind, your yeah. face, your, you know, just, and you, you don't realize how normal life you're not aware of those things. Like, it, well, it's why so many people are taking acting for business. I mean, right. you know, acting it's is a becoming a. City is touring the nation, training people in improv communication. Right. Yeah. Because it teaches you so much about all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, I lost my train of thought, but I was basically going to talk about the difference between acting in plays versus acting on camera. Mm. When you act on camera, um, you're more a piece of clay than a piece of paint. You're just a piece of clay that is going to be molded by the director when you're all done. So he, he, the director wants you to, you know, they want you to act. It's preferred that you're good because that takes a lot less it's time. Preferred. It's preferred. <laughs> but they can, you know, a good director can make you better uh, if you're not so great, which we've seen in movie after movie. Right. And, uh, and then when you're on stage... You work with a director in a much more collaborative way, and then you get to ignore him Because <laughs> <laughs> once you go on, I mean, there were some things, there was some direction I was given for the, well, definitely for a couple plays. And uh, when I go on stage, it's like, well, I can't even, no, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to go. Right. And... Uh, just have to ignore the direction to a certain point. I mean, you know, the director's deciding all these things, but then when you when the play happens, it's all you. So it's it's an interesting interesting difference. And it's different every night. It's it's different every night. That's the fun about yeah. I think that's what's really fun about it. Oh, it's and very the, exciting. Yeah. yeah. The biggest surprise when we did Scrooge, um, I'm still shocked about this. I hope I get another part like this someday. Is that when I auditioned? Audition bigger than everyone else for mm -hmm. Jacob Marley. Everyone was being pretty low key. I don't know. Their energy was down. So yeah. I just like. It was a pretty low key audition, it was to be honest. <laughs> You're right. It, it was, was a little bit. Yeah. It was a little bit low key. No one can see this motion I'm making. I'm making a motion <laughs> a to low indicate key. low key. A low key <laughs> hand gesture. <laughs> so uh, in my castle that we're recording in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who knew there was a German medieval castle in South Eugene? It's pretty amazing, isn't I'm, it? I'm yes, very this impressed. was this was all imported brick by brick uh, from the 1400s. Uh, it's it's been in my family for a long time, and uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's quite the space. I'm, I feel very lucky. Somewhere deep in the woods of Oregon, right. So, <laughs> Oh, so anyway, I auditioned bigger than anyone. I just said, let me do this like a Jacob Marley. And I made it big. And sure yeah. enough, they cast me. And so they, I was making it a little bit bigger on my own. And the directors kept saying, you can go bigger. You can go bigger. And I was like, oh, my God, you're telling this to an actor? And it just shocked me that I was never told to bring it back. Because, Same. you know, as the rehearsal went on, as... Yeah. Yeah. It just got I, bigger. I, that's generally my strategy, too, is to just... I always think in an audition, especially for me as a woman, you walk into a community theater audition, and there's, let's say, five parts for men and two parts for women, and five men show up and 27 women show up. Ouch. So it's like you have to be like, okay, I have to do something to stand out like this is my time to make big choices because I always assume like being memorable is going to be better than playing it conservative and just they're not even going to remember you against you know the other 27 people auditioning for that role so I always just try to make as big a choices as I can and yeah I remember in Scrooge too like they I, I once I was in the show, I would try to rein it in a little bit because I thought, you know, this is just going to be ridiculous if I go full Cali. Full, yeah. <laughs> I thought, I was kept thinking, um, I'm going to take this, uh, you know, keep taking it up a notch until the director says, okay, come on, bring it back yeah, one. Yeah, rein it and in. And no one ever said that, <laughs> which is kind of my, with any part like that, it, that's that would be my strategy. Just take yeah. it out there. Until somebody says something, and they never... I was still am shocked to this day that they never said, Whoa, buddy. Oh, uh, I think Whoa. they had to to a couple of us. 
I remember they, s- they never said it to me. I That's remember all. Sarah, the director, saying at one point, it's so much better as a director to have actors to need to ask actors to rein it in rather than give me more. Yeah, that's totally She would right. much rather have us be way over the top. That makes than, a lot like, of sense to not me. Not delivering enough. It's it's harder to get more out of an actor than it is to bring them down, which I think depends on the actor. Though. I was going to say it depends <laughs> on the actor. I mean, maybe if you had Robin Williams there, <laughs> it might be a little more it difficult. Would be harder to get him it, to it rein it in, especially '80s Robin Williams. Right. You might- <laughs> <laughs> have a little difficulty bringing that back. Whoa! Whoa! Hold on there. Get off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so you like? Oh, you. We were talking about uh, schedules when you first walked in. You you go to bed early and get up early. That's very athletic. <laughs> I mean, that's yes. <laughs> that's right. For like, any of you right who like an athlete. <laughs> are looking at my headshot, you that's the first uh, thing that comes to mind. She must work out. <laughs> the sad thing is, is I do work out a lot. <laughs> but I still uh, carry around, you know, several sacks of potatoes on me. You ever Have you ever seen the, the picture, I'm, I know it was floating around Facebook, of the Olympic athletes in their underwear? I have seen, seen something like that. There, I where there was. I remember seeing one of of five women, and there was like a shot put thrower and like a hurdler and like a boxer, and they all had different kind of shaped yeah. bodies. This was like twenty sizes. people, men and women, the whole Olympic team yes. of whatever year, okay, and they're yeah. all in black underwear. And that was the incredible thing is that the, all types. I think it's awesome. All types, you know, there totally. was thinny, skinny little runners, and there was the great big shot putters, and. Yeah, it was like, look, these are athletes. They all look different. It, yeah, it was a, it was Shot a cool. Shot put cool BT thing. dubs for any husky <laughs> adolescents uh, listening to this podcast. Uh, Shot put's a great way to get a college scholarship. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not a lot there's of people not a lot do of, it. <laughs> a lot of folks it's out there doing shot low put. barrier to entry, oh. and if you can throw a large metal ball more than twenty feet, you're like sitting. Pretty University of Montana will give you a full ride. I happen to know this. You happen to oh a friend of mine. You, oh okay, a friend of, you. not me. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> never. No, I don't. <laughs> could have been. But yeah, but a, a friend of mine in, in high school actually, I think, and maybe not full ride, but got pretty good scholarships to. No, she went to South Dakota. Another one went to Montana, but. Oh yeah, well, it's a college. There's college. Either way, I mean, uh, I mean pro- probably free college. Try, yeah, free college. U of O would probably be, you know, not that difficult to get yeah, into if you take, could yeah. throw 27 feet or 22 feet, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I remember yeah. I, when I There's did it a, in like seventh you grade. You don't see a I, lot of them. No, not a lot. You don't see a lot I tried of them. it out in I did I did track one year in middle school where they let you do all the sports so you can figure out what you're not terrible at and. uh yeah, I think I threw mine like 12 feet. <laughs> I was terrible at, at pretty much all the sports in high school. Yeah, I'm really bad I, at I, I was really clumsy in high school. I got, uh, it took me into my 20s till I actually started having some kind of coordination. <laughs> Maybe after playing drums for five years, I started. I'm sure that would help. Yeah. I think it helped. I think it helped. And I didn't think I had any coordination until I sat down on a drum kit. And then the fact that I could go boom, chuck, boom, boom, chuck, that's all I all There's I really a certain, needed. Uh, what's the word? Indifference that comes with being an adult, though, that I think helps. That's true. It helps true. you get better at things because, like, you don't care. You don't care as much. Well, I was, uh, I worked out with a gymnastics team in high school. And some of these, there was, uh, there's a really good, or there, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a really good gymnastics gym in Eugene, like, world class yeah and uh the kids i'm going to high school with are going to this gym which is my niece did that for a long time she spent four or five hours a day doing gymnastics so these guys were amazing in you know high school level they were doing incredible stuff and uh so i worked out with the team and uh, the gymnastics coach was really nice and and really encouraging. It's like you got you should be on the team. Yeah, we need we just need more people. I'm like, what? So I can sit on the bench <laughs> yeah. and watch you guys do gymnastics. Let's be I a team player, Joel. So. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Mr. Albrecht. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> 
you go sit over there. This is a tournament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That> would, <laughs> we'll get to you later. <laughs> you can uh, wave the flag. So do you schedule time for yourself? Or do you I, just all have All my time? time is for myself. Uh, well, that's, that's good. That's a great attitude. Uh, yeah, I, you, mean, I mean, you're you know, a busy person. I, I am busy. I do, I give a lot, and but I, I tend to think, yeah, I schedule time for myself, but I also tend to think a lot of the things that I do is for myself. You know, like I'm in the career that I want to be in, and I spend time at the theater because it makes me feel good. And, uh, you know, there's definite times, I, you know, about this time last year, I hit a real stroke of luck in the theater world and I was in multiple shows at a time and dealing and also doing volunteer work with the VLT and I was doing some business stuff and I had work was really busy and um, yeah, I, I do. I burn out sometimes. But. That, I don't understand how people can do that personally, be in multiple shows. Uh, That's like, to me, one bananas. show is... Well, yeah, it must be. You know it what happened be. is I did this. I did a production of Good People in Cottage Grove, and they basically called me and said, "If you don't do this show, I don't think we're going to be able to do this show." Wow. So, well, that's nice. They were, no, it was like you're our last hope. <laughs> We've called everyone. Come on, I was, try, I was trying to play it out. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm just saying, don't people. be too impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> smaller smaller productions like the Roving Park Players and and the Opal Center uh, sometimes just have trouble getting actors. Um, and so that was the case. And and somebody who had agreed to do the show thought uh, was also in the Northwest Ten Minute Play Festival with me. At the time, and and so they thought, oh, let's let's call Callie, and um, they decided to do an all female female production of Good People, and so I played I played a dude, and uh, oh, you didn't they awesome. didn't change the part they just had it no well we just played it as men did it and sh- opposite Shakespeare style yeah um, mostly because that play wouldn't have worked because there had to be pregnancies involved and so. If, so that wouldn't have made much. If sense. we had changed all the genders, it wouldn't have made, <laughs> wouldn't have worked. Sort of like, yeah, trying to do an all female noises off or something like that. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I I burn out when I go too hard sometimes. So, I think me making time for myself is a lot of times just saying no to projects. Like right now, I chose not to audition for a spring show because I'm. I've got some other things lined up, and I'm trying to take a break. It makes me sad, though. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard, hard to give up say. stuff. Theater's a very weird hobby. So it's when <laughs> when is the auditions for Harvey? Auditions for Harvey are May okay. 11th. Okay, I'm just May I'm totally 11th. asking for myself. Yeah, you should totally come. I really want to audition. I'm oh just my worried God, about my you'd back. Be so but great. wouldn't I be great as Elwood, the lead? Yeah, Elwood. He's Absolutely. he's literally one of my favorite um, characters. Mine too. He's amazing. I, I was saw that in love with the Jimmy Stewart movie when I was a kid. Oh my god! Yeah, the, I saw that when I was a kid. I saw it done at South Eugene High School because my older sister went there, and um, I was so disappointed that the actor was trying to do Jimmy Stewart. Oh, and even yeah. as a little kid, I was like, dude, dude, what are you doing? Because no one, everyone else was just playing the parts. You know, they were yeah. just doing it, and. He was just so trying to be Mr. Stewart. And when I was oh, young, my oh, mother, don't she do said that. to me, she said, Elwood. The- she always <laughs> called me Elwood. She said, in this life, you could be very, oh, so smart or oh, so pleasant. And for years, I was smart and I prefer pleasant. It is it's a, one of my favorite It's such lines. a beautiful piece of work. It's Just so good. Just the whole concept of, yeah. <laughs> for one, they think he's nuts because he's nice. I know. <laughs> it, it really is a, it's, much, it's a great for modern times, isn't it? I mean, I it, think it's that's so exactly what, what the appeal was when we put it on the docket. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and Carrie Welsh is directing, who was our assistant director for Scrooge. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you that. 
um, and if I, she was still directing, because I knew she, she was is. scheduled to. Yeah. But I know things change, too. So. Sometimes they do. But, yeah. yeah, she is. And I immediately went up to her as soon as Harvey was voted for on the same day and said, I would love to be your assistant director because it's one of my favorite plays, but it wasn't necessarily one where I felt there was a part for me that I was really drawn to, but I wanted to be part of it. Huh, okay. And, I can um, think of several parts you could yeah, do. But, yeah, well, you know, thinking back on it now, I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, actually, I could have rocked a Nurse Kelly. Heck I yeah! Could. That's yes! But, you know, for and me, does, I'm, like, does I'm the, a little um, too young to play the sister. Well, I was thinking of the orderlies. Do they have the to daughter. be guys? No, I guess mm, not. If you're playing period, though, it'd be pretty difficult. Well, I guess that's true. I, and I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't really thinking that. And I had just but seen I, it last yeah. year. And, and the, uh, yeah. So you're going to do it, period. We are. Yeah. That's your plan. Because yeah. that's even more awesome because I love those suits. Yeah. Like, and it, it carries, <laughs> carries cool actually clothes. a pretty traditional director. I've auditioned for her before. And um, her AD in the Christmas show she directed was trying to also cross gender, get me to play a, a different, a, a male part. Mm -hmm. um, and she she called me and said, I almost cast you as as the Russian because you had such a fun accent. But uh, but I can't do it is what she told me. Just can't do it. Just can't do I was it. Like, yes, you See, can. I don't know. Sure I don't can, know what's going on with her because she doesn't <laughs> post on social media every day. So I know I'm, totally I'm the, the only dark. one that everyone knows what's going on with me. <laughs> Because I post everything on social media. All right, let's talk about social media. All right. Because I, it's a subject. It's sometimes I could write a book. People occasionally talk about it. They do. It, they like to hate on it. I think. They well, that's kind of my um, that's kind of my deal. Is they uh, there's a, a light it. and a dark side. I don't hate it. I have seen. I have gotten. I can see why people hate it. I can totally understand. Um how it can be hard f for someone who's not in a good space right. to go on there. And, yeah. and um, I, I mean, people that are anywhere close to having mental difficulties, I would recommend, well, turn that stuff off. Just turn it off. Yeah. If, you're, if you have any kind of addiction problem, I just was watching a great um, podcast with Russell Brand. Have you ever heard of Russell Brand? I have heard of him. Yeah. yeah. He, he's a, a stupid uh, English good-looking guy. But <laughs> I'll say his name Good several. Scruffy. <laughs> scruffy. If I say his name enough times, maybe I'll get some listeners. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Anyway, he was. <laughs> <laughs> it's your audio it's SEO. Audio. <laughs> he was talking about how he had to give up well a lot of electronics because he was addicted to it the same mm -hmm. way he was addicted to cigarettes and drink and other things. So he had to give it up, and it was almost as hard. It, it was interesting because the person he was talking to said, so what was the hardest thing? And he said, oh, alcohol. I still want some. But I yeah. digress. Uh, <laughs> I, think there, I think there's a good side to social media. There's definitely a dark side. Uh, what do you think and what's your favorite? I think that site? it, in both light and dark, it amplifies what has already existed as the human experience. Um. You know, I grew up without it, and I was I was I was bullied. I also was a bully in response to being bullied. Um, you know, and and that's prob that's I think that is the dark side of it is that when you get into a negative space, it can be very amplified. But for people like me who maybe grew up in a small town, who really struggled to feel connected to anyone. Um, you know, there was a lot of chaos in my family. Most of my friends were religious and I wasn't. Um, I was very, you know, I was a big theater dork. I read a lot. Um, Outcast. And, yeah. I, you know, I just, I struggled to feel really close to anybody. And, um, and when Facebook came along, it really helped me find my tribe. And it's also... Really, the only reason I have any friends in Eugene, um, because I was able to join local groups and find out what was going on. And um, I've noticed that my friends on that are n that choose not to participate in social media often 
ask me things like, how did you find out about that? How do you know about these things? How did you get into theater? How are you friends with so-and-so? And a lot of it, for me, my whole life here has has come from participating on social media. Um, and so I'm, I'm a big champion for it, I think. Um, but it, it, it's just like anything else. It's a tool, you know, and you can use a hammer to build a home or you can use it to smash people's skulls in if that's what you choose to do. Um, so it's a, it does increase access to both good and bad things. So I agree. If you are in a dark place, it's not maybe the healthiest thing for you. Um, but I also take a lot of time to curate it and make sure that the right influencers are in my space that I see when I open the application. Which is a really good point because I think that's um, something that people seem to disregard. Uh, you hear about people being bullied on social media, and if you actually look into it a little bit, it's it might be one person, one place – who has like a thousand friends on the social media mm -hmm. and they're getting bullied by some of them. And, you know, for me, when I was in school and got bullied, I couldn't turn it off. Right. You know, I couldn't just go, oh, I'm not going to be on Facebook anymore. There was, right. it, it's like I, I have to walk so through the, to to I still have to go to school. I have to walk through the, yeah. you know, the lunchroom or whatever it is. So, um, you know, I know that's a, a important issue, but what you say is, I think is very valid. If there's stuff on there that you're really not digging, uh, turn it off. And I, the funniest thing is when I, I've seen a lot of posts on Facebook about how they're going to give up Facebook. And, I see and that, that all the time, and it cracks <laughs> those, yeah, me up. Really and you know what? <laughs> they come crawling back every I, time. You see them the next week. I know. Talking about Yep. Oh, it's a Facebook bashing post. Where do you know where you posted this? Yeah, you, you get this right. I like the ones that are like Facebook is gonna filter this out because I'm talking bad about it. And oh, I'm like, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so guess what? They okay. really don't care. They, you, no, they not you don't, don't have that many followers. Right. And if you did, they still wouldn't filter you out <laughs> because now you're gonna make them money. Come on, right. folks. It's you an know, enterprise. It's, yeah. Uh, so we've said Facebook yeah. enough, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg. You can sponsor this podcast now. <laughs> anytime Facebook any, wants any, to sponsor anytime our podcast. You want to <laughs> sponsor. I think you know it's a, uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, people really they love to hate it, and I just you know like, I was talking to a coworker of mine recently who you know who said just people are just so fake. And I was like, well, maybe you're just friends with fake people, you know, because my, my feed doesn't look that Good way. Good point. I have yeah. a lot of, and, and I, I always tend to believe that, and I believe this beyond social media, you tend to attract the type of people who are attracted to your personal brand. And I've kind of made myself this uh, sort of champion for authenticity and vulnerability. I talk a lot very openly on social media about things that I struggle with, things that are hard for me. Um, and I, it's intention. It's an, an intentional thing that I do because, um, because I am concerned about the negative consequences of it. And I want to make sure that it remains an authentic experience. That's, uh, that's nice. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't, um, I, yeah, I get a lot of people that are extremely authentic on there, and I'm often surprised at how much someone might share. And mm -hmm. you know, your explanation is is spot on. That that makes more sense because I would never go on social media and just pour my heart out. At least, well, not on Facebook anyway. Maybe on Twitter where there's more haters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I save all my snarky, <laughs> angry things for Twitter. Well, it's the funny thing is now I'm doing a <laughs> podcast to do exactly that. Yeah, <laughs> a part of my podcast is about uh, you know positive messages. That that's really what I'm after. Ultimately, is to put more positive messages out there, more positive energy. The podcast that I that inspired me to do this um, that was that's really their goal. Um, the other reason is because I was uh, my back hurt so bad that I couldn't play drums, and then I started having these weird eye problems, so I couldn't do hardly I couldn't read or write. So I thought, well, maybe I could do a podcast. 
Maybe <laughs> Kevin Smith's right. Talk. <laughs> I can still talk. And, and then, of course, I get into it, and it's, there's all this work involved. <laughs> Jeez, what? I have to record it? I have to edit it? Oh, no, I'm all not going to edit them anymore. Yeah, all this equipment. But now, see, this I has got. I don't know if Mark Maron edits his very much. Uh, the good ones, I think, don't. And this one, you know, we've been talking for a while, and there hasn't been any large gaps, and I haven't dropped anything on the drums, so I'm not going to have to edit this at all. That's, those That's are the kind of great. things you have to edit out. Right. Or if someone starts talking about things that they don't want to talk about, but you don't have that problem. Because you, 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 you know, you have a, uh, I don't know, clean past, and also you're... <laughs> You're clean. <laughs> clean in quotes, and you're <laughs> you're uh, <laughs> and you're okay talking about personal things, which is um, yeah, I think that's a, a nice thing. People people need more honesty in the world. Honesty is a tough thing to come by. Um, not that I'm gonna always be honest, because there's plenty of things uh, I'll probably never talk about. But we'll see. Maybe I'll have guests that just pull it right out of me. There are, you know, I have. I, I, there are definite things that I won't talk too much about, mostly to protect others. Well, that's a good, um, yeah. Those are the and, things that I, I you know, write. like I, I was married before. Um, I don't talk a lot about my ex-husband. Um, you know, I have, I have siblings that um, have really struggled after my mom died, and that's a huge part of my life. But I, I don't talk about it very often because I don't want people to, to judge them. You know, it's not, it's not for me to put their story out in the world. Right. That's that's really not. I mean, that's really thoughtful. Extremely thoughtful. I'm. I am. Um, yeah. Like, there's plenty of ex- um, experiences that I've had that I probably shouldn't talk about because there was other people involved. But I can easily talk about them and leave it out. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about. You know. I think I can talk in general generalities. In it. Yeah. 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 Um, so I try to be mindful of that, and I think that was that was actually something Mark Maron has brought up on his podcast when I've listened to him in the past, where he said that he wasn't as careful about it when he started, um, and then kind of somebody started bringing it to his attention, like, "Hey, you can't just like air out everybody's dirty laundry." It, yeah, I can. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, it's upsetting um, that you can't because. <laughs> Well, you want to, right? Because it feels I, you like want to. it feels I mean, so I, much yeah. part of your experience as well. Exactly. Yeah. And yes, I like I say, we did this test podcast that we started getting into all kinds of fun subjects, and then my friend decided that, you know, maybe he didn't want that side of him out in the world. Mm, um, mm-hmm. But luckily, he edits, so I gave it to him to edit. And but I was <laughs> like, <kinda> here. <laughs> like, here you go. You Whatever can, you want to say. Is yeah, fine. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to upset you in case I want to have you on the show again. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, yeah, I see where that can happen. So and also now that I am warning people, hey, this is live, even though it's not live. Live-ish. It's live-ish. Uh, I don't want to edit it, so, you know, try not to say anything. But, I mean, you didn't even send any anything back when I said, is there anything you don't want to talk about? So, that's pretty intriguing. But that may we, also be because I'm bad at reading my email. <laughs> that's what I count on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's but what no, I'm hoping yeah. with everyone. No, I, I'll <laughs> don't talk Don't really about... read this email. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk don't read, about anything. Don't read the release either. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll mm. I'll talk about pretty much anything. You know, there's things that I probably don't care to. I mean, I think there's I do I have I have um retired airing out my political opinions. Uh and that's, I have found that it's that's not interesting. productive. <laughs> it's uh yeah. I'm starting to feel that way too. It's um like Facebook became for several months, like what was it, a a couple of years ago? It became <laughs> almost entirely a political platform, at least on my feed, yeah, and I it, fed into it. And I and then yeah. at some point, I'm like, "This is not really why I'm on." Because I'm the same as you. I went on there actually to promote stuff yeah. and to you know tell people where my next uh, gig was, or you know, also it's really cool for connecting to family, yeah. um, family that you 
don't see all that often. Well, and I'm a Navy see, vet too, and, so I get to keep in touch with all my Navy buddies that are all over the world right now. So that's, yeah, that that part's that really, really awesome. Special. That is that's really cool. And I, I mean, I connected. I, well, not really connected with. Connected with on I'm Facebook friends with a lot of high school people, and uh, although I'm still not talking to any of them, <laughs> it's interesting to, to see what they're up to. <laughs> And I was invited to a handful. reunion that I never went to, but that was just because uh, I don't know. You know what I did reasons. for my for my ten year reunion? I didn't go, but I came to town and took appointments like the Godfather. Like <laughs> you can come to me if you oh, want you to can see come. me, but I'm not going to the reunion. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I like it. That's how self important I am. <laughs> but it's only you, no one else. Right. <laughs> I was the only one that had the only good one. sense to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we uh, we've been going on for quite a bit here. I, uh, You're I'm listening a to. Are you still talking? And now I'm going <laughs> to ask you. <laughs> no, that's not it. It's uh, were you still talking? I know the name. I'm coming. It's Are you there. still talking? <laughs> Are we still talking? Well, I did want to do, I had some any guest questions. Yeah, I, oh, I, yeah. I, you know, I'm still developing this thing. So I wanted to mm-hmm. run down a few questions. Have you ever listened to Michael Ian Black's podcast? I've not. He does a really I've, cool, he does like a, a, like a, a five, a top five questions at the end of all of his interviews. Oh, which is something that, uh, oh, that actor, Inside the Actor Studio did. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. He did a, yeah. He's, he's there's more than quite, five here, but I'll, I will narrow it down. He's James Lipton, but yeah. Yeah, J- yeah he's pretty epic. I That's, literally learned a lot of incredible um, technique from watching that show. Oh, yeah. if, if anyone's an actor and they're young, look up Inside the Actor Studio with James Lipton. Um, find your favorite actor on there and, and then keep going. Watch all, every episode because it's... It's, it's so good. It's so good. You get so many insights. The Tom Hanks one is my favorite. I can't even pick a favorite. There are so many of them. Um, That's just the one that stands out to me. Uh huh. And then also um, watch Daryl Hammond's SNL impressions of James Lipton after you watch abs- it. Yeah, after you watch. That's <laughs> also a very special experience. It is. That stuff is brilliant. <laughs> it's definitely as good as watching the gold. show. You gotta you gotta see the show. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch the show first and then watch the and SNL. Watch yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, that stuff is beautiful. Oh man, beautiful stuff. Oh, that go? was another thing. You oh. got to go. No, no, I just, no, 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 no. I don't have to, to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm just now. I gotta go back and watch some of those. Go back and forever. check them out. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you, mm, it's too bad that he he stopped doing it. But there's, I mean, God, there's hundreds of episodes, isn't there? I there, mean, he did it for decades. He did it I for think. a long time. And, yeah, and it's. I mean, most of these people, if they didn't go to the actors' studio, which is a place they teach acting in New York and L.A., then they, they're sitting there in front of a classroom, you know, talking yeah. about wh- how, how they do what they do, which is very cool. Um, unfortunately, it's mostly movie stars because that's what people want to see, but uh, the majority of them did have done theater, so they talk mm-hmm. about both things. And in most cases, the thing that I oh, that always kind of... One thing that irks me about actors... Uh, when actors. they talk about actors in theater, uh, a couple things. Okay, there's a lot of things that are. No, no, not true. Uh, <laughs> I hate actors. I can't stand them. Uh, ah! Anyway, so what's the one, one thing? <laughs> one, the two things. One thing is when they think that somehow training is going to hurt them, and musicians have this theory too that somehow by getting. Um, by hearing ideas about how, you know, technique and different things mm. you can do to be a better actor, they think that's somehow going to hurt their, their ability, originality. their originality yeah. or something, yeah. something like that. And um, the other thing that irks me sometimes is when they um, talk about how different stage acting is from movie acting. Uh, the best actors I've, the, the actors that I'm the biggest fans of have said repeatedly, like I've seen many different actors say this, that there is no difference. Hmm, it's different. I mean, that like the technique is really not that different. It's a different experience because obviously when you're doing it live, you can't screw up. But the, the well, you what can. You, you, you just, well, you can. You're not supposed, supposed to. to know yeah, about you're, it. 
<laughs> which they usually don't. It's surprising. They don't. It's amazing. They, it, it really is amazing. Um, it, it's even more, <laughs> it's funny because when I uh, played in bands a lot, um, people, the band would always be so bummed if someone made a mistake on stage, especially a guitar player. He'd come mm. off stage and be like, man, that was incredible. Everyone's high five and da da, snap, snap. Oh, man, I, I missed that note. <laughs> it's like, so what? I You're know. the only one that knows that. It's so hard. We didn't know that. Anyway. It's uh, hard, though, for me as an actor, too. I hate, <laughs> I hate making mistakes, even though I know it's fine. Like, academically, I know it's fine. But uh, it's, sometimes it's funny. Well, sometimes it's funny. Fun if you make a mistake a couple times in Time Stand Still, we covered a mistake really well because that was a show you couldn't make mistakes in. There was like, there's line after line after line, and they're non sequitur. So, you know, you suddenly start a different conversation, and if you screwed up a line, it could get you in real trouble. So, I was really impressed when we would screw up a line and no one knew it but us. It was yeah. fun. Well, that show was intense. That show was intense. I didn't think I could do it, but uh, I do. Oh, you killed it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You can say Absolutely. that again. You so. killed it. <laughs> I love that. I will tell you what, that show, probably not your part, to be perfectly honest, but that show, I brought my husband to that show, and it brought him to tears. And after it, after we watched it, he came out of the theater and he looked me right in the eye and he said, I get it now. I get why you love this. Oh, that's awesome. It was awesome. a big moment for me. Yeah, that's a huge moment. Because he's always been supportive and he's always mm -hmm. wanted me to be happy. And he's, you know, we're both independent people and we do our own thing. But, you know, to be able to have a light bulb go off for your partner to suddenly understand, like, why I'm putting dozens of hours a week into these projects that's you know, yeah. I that's really. Such, that's awesome. He didn't say it about one of my shows, if but I, he said it about yours. <laughs> if I, and if my part <laughs> brought people to tears, I that would have been really screwing up. That would have been weird. That would have been weird. <laughs> you uh, didn't if, have, the, if the you comedy didn't have relief brings part. you to yeah. tears, <laughs> something's really wrong. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. He has a twenty-eight-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> she was cute. <laughs> Extremely, and very talented. It, it works so well. So, uh, yeah, now I completely I went right off the train that I was I know. on. So you were going to ask, you had some I had kind some of every question. Every guest question. How much time are we going to take here? Oh, boy. Okay. I can't Five do more this. minutes. I'll, okay, I'll we can take, do it. I'll take like uh, Let's go fast. a few of these. Let's do it in Do you like seconds. turtles? Sure. Ninja turtles, especially. Ever thought about doing a podcast? Just now. I mean, of your own. Oh, not, no. I've always actually hated my voice. Interesting, because I kind of do too. But uh, I think most people do. I, I try and ignore actually. it. <laughs> As an actor, oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. I have this technique that I do that I want to. Um, I don't know if other actors do this or not. But when I go to an audition, and then when I get the part, it has to be amped up even more. And I'm tr I'm using it for this podcast. I have to think I'm the best thing in the world. Do you ever do that? Right. You have you to do. walk in and you thinking, man, do. I am. I am it. There is there is nothing like this, this in the room. Mine. This part I'm is gonna mine. Nail I'm going to do it. You have to. Yeah. Or yeah. you or you because my my second guess yourself. Right. Because my small mind was saying I could never do this play with with. Uh, uh, what the hell are we just talking about? I go into every uh, audition. Oh, with thinking, time stand still. I um, actually go into every audition thinking there's no way I'm going to get cast, and I got nothing to lose. <laughs> and I got no, which is I'm just gonna. Go for it. Which is a healthy thing to do. It's a healthy yeah. thing to do, especially now that you are a director and knowing enough directors, whether or not they cast you could have nothing to do with how good a performance you put up. It usually doesn't. Yeah. It's, it can it's have a lot of other how do you things look, going how do you on. how do you work with the person next to you? Are you yeah. the right age? You know, a lot of like I'm thinking about like Dracula. I, I did a very good audition for Dracula and then I looked around the room and I thought, there's not a single male in here that looks even remotely my age. They're either too old or too young, and it's not going to look good on stage. It's not, yeah. And and which and is kind of silly because of all the makeup. When you but, when you say you know. things like that, people are like, "No, no, no, no! It doesn't have to be that way." And I'm like, "It, 
But it, it is. It kind of does. It doesn't it have is. to be, but it is. That's, it, that's, it is that way, regardless of whether the, the director's conscious of it. Yep. You know, and me as a director, I'm willing to admit to like, yeah, yep. sometimes you go for the the aesthetic, the vibe, yeah. the, you know, the right chemistry well, of the group. Mark Hamill, it's obvious, obvious example. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's the vibe. He was. He worked with those other actors. I don't think he got cast entirely on his acting ability. He oh. worked so He's well. He's better than Hayden Christensen. With the people in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's brilliant yeah. at the part. And actually, I still. I'm. I'm a huge, huge fan of Mark Hamill because he remembered my name. Oh. I used to work in. You should tweet him that. Uh, you remembered my name. Yeah, who are you? What? Yeah. Get away. No, uh, he wouldn't. He probably he's wouldn't. He go, he's oh yeah, I totally remember you. Wonderful to follow on Twitter. He's a well, he's a really nice guy. I did. I was a production assistant, and I did animation. And he was did a lot of animation at that time. That's and, so cool. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, yeah. It was it was fun, fun life, fun LA life, mm-hmm. and uh, learned too much about the industry. So I've heard that. A lot. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I could never have been an actor in that kind of environment, but. Um, it's just, it's it's different. Yeah. But uh, he was, so I would go and get the actors to sign their contracts at recordings. That was one of the funnest parts of my job. I'd go to the recording, here's your contract, I need to make sure you get a signature. So, <laughs> <laughs> he was in The Tick, and... Uh, I can't remember what part he played, but he was he was brilliant. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill Mark as Hamill. Mark Hamill. Oh no, this not oh. no. He was a villain. He was some kind of villain, which oh, he played. Okay. A, he did a lot of, and then um, he was in. I can't remember the other show, and I I don't want to misquote what it was, but this was like a year or two later. I show up at a completely different studio. Yeah, hey Mark Hamill, you ain't hanging. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you again. I'm like, what the? You're kidding me. You me. And it, it was literally like, hey, Joel. It, it wasn't like, hey, dude. It, oh, you know, hello, he, rando he, production <laughs> assistant. <laughs> yeah. See you exactly. Again. Random production guy. Do you, can I get another wall? It was nothing like that. It That's was just so cool. like, you're, uh, yeah. I, I remember your name, and that's, um, I think that's probably why he's so successful in what he does. <laughs> but he also had a ton, he really entertained the green room, because he, he sat there and told story after story, and why he was doing what he was doing. So, oh, we, we I asked that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you listen to podcasts? I do. You mentioned one. I do. I listen, I love, um, my, my quick plugs are The History Chicks, Outstanding. Uh, telling uh, biography stories of women in history, and then they dig really deep, and they talk really fast, and uh, cover a lot of ground and a lot of uh, a lot of things you don't learn about in your typical history lesson. It's it's gritty and fun. Um, uh, my favorite author, Elizabeth Gilbert, did a podcast called Magic Lessons. Um, I love How to Be Amazing by Michael Ian Black. Is that the one you? Sent me in the email, maybe. Probably. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, is, he's great. I love um Anna Ferris's podcast, Unqualified. Anna Ferris is Unqualified. Uh, that one's really good too. Um, and I listen to Mark Maron sometimes. Well, that's awesome and that also, you listen to so many because I didn't know. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people who are like what a podcast. Oh no, What's I listen that? to a lot of but, them, and that's great. It's funny because I feel like I was the last one to jump on the pon- podcast bandwagon. I was like, I don't know. I don't really like talk. You know, like I listen to music and I, I listen to audiobooks. I like long form fiction, et cetera. And, um, and then it was like, as soon as Liz Gilbert had a podcast, I was like, oh, I'm into podcasts now. But um, yeah, it's, uh, they're great. And they're, they're so nice to have just like an hour long piece of content if you're driving somewhere or I, I'm on the treadmill or whatever. Um, yeah, I that's, listen to a lot of them. That's exactly how I got into them. And I listen to a bunch of them because I can't look at screens now because I have this weird eye thing going I on. I hate reading stuff on screens anyway. Uh, I do too, but it's just as yeah. bad reading on a... Anyhow, mm. it's part of why I listen to more and more podcasts. But a friend of mine recommended this one called S-Town, which is produced by NPR and mm. is a really bizarre story. And that's how I listen. I listened to it in the car, and then I got totally hooked, and I had to listen to the rest of it 
Um, it's hard to even explain what it's about, but this... this I've heard of it before. It's yeah. one of the biggest ones out there. Yeah, I get it. It gets it's, recommended to me a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you should you should check it out. Okay. From the, the minute you hear... This guy just... This NPR um, uh, storyteller, basically, gets a call from this guy who wants him to investigate a murder in the South. And it it goes on from there. And it it's hard to explain without... Anyway, S Town. Yeah. So that ho- that Did you know me. too hooked that um, Yeardsley Smith, who's the voice of Lisa Simpson, lives in Eugene, and she has a podcast, a true crime podcast with another woman, and oh. they they interview Eugene police detectives about their weirdest oh. cases. Oh, I wonder if they'd be on my podcast to talk about their podcast. You totally should. Since my podcast gittered. is about podcasts. We're putting out the call to Yeardsley right now. Come on. What's her? Yeardsley? I didn't know she lived in Eugene. At least part time. Yeah. Wow. You know, we have yeah. another extremely famous neighbor, the guy with the mustache. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. You know, he um, he's a total cheat when it comes to acting. I know, but it, oh. because it's it, delicious. Well, he yes, could just but stand there and I'm like... Oh. Well, I was actually referring to his voice. Because well, th- yeah, he could talk. <laughs> as soon too. as he opens his mouth, he's done. But he's got a presence, you know. I, it's so, it's compelling. Did you see that movie he did, The Hero? Recently? I'm actually still watching that. I really like it. For some reason, I got distracted, but. It's very, yeah. it's very understated, but it's got a real. It's. I found it very touching. I didn't think I was going to like it because I thought, oh, great, another story about some washed up Hollywood actor, like The Birdman 2. <laughs> <laughs> Not and quite, like, but yeah. No, I, that was just <laughs> what I, I... see what you mean. That was the attitude I went I into it with. Mean. It was like, oh, yeah. great, another story about an old white dude who used to be famous. Like, we need more of those in the world. But it was a, it was a great movie. And Laura Prepon is amazing as well. It's really hilarious because I saw someone interviewing him and they're like, so so do you relate to the character? Is that anything like you? And he goes, well, I'm not a washed up. I'm not <laughs> washed know? up, you <laughs> bastard. Exactly. Not really. I'm Sam fucking Elliot. <laughs> and I tell yeah. you, he and doesn't he's really look really good in r- A Star is Born, too. He doesn't look right without a mustache. No. It's bizarre. Can he exist without a mustache? He can. I can't remember what he's in. He was in some series... And I think he shaved it because he was playing the bad guy. Oh, disturbing. And it was. He was like, that Great. really works, but grow that thing back. <laughs> You're going to put that back on, right? You're going to grow that back, right? It's like a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Oh, I wonder oh, if he funny. shaved it and sold it for a charity or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I'd buy, maybe I'd that put was a, a bit in for yeah, Sam see, Elliott's I'm mustache. Sure, exactly. Totally. No, who wouldn't? Right. Who wouldn't? Go in my collection. <laughs> All right. Now that we've gotten Sam Elliott's mustache out of the way, <laughs> let me see if I can wrap this up live. All right. Because if I can't, then I'm I will it's I will edit like it. It's gonna be like Kevin Smith's It'll three like hour. Nothing. Yeah, it's gonna be a three hour wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so I would like to thank my guest Callie Cadris for being. Ah, uh, thank you. I knew I was gonna <laughs> mess that up. Callie Cardis. Oh, and I'd like to thank my guest Callie Cardis. For being on the podcast. I hope I can have you back on like my 100th episode or something. I would, that would very be, much enjoy that. It's uh, been a great, enjoyable conversation. All right. Thank you. That's fantastic. And I would like to thank my sponsors. Okay, I still don't have any sponsors. Maybe next time. Maybe the uh, Very Little Theater can sponsor your podcast. Oh, that would be great. And I've been looking at uh, Pan Global Airlines. Okay, maybe Camel's a cigarette? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's All your right. demographic, Joel? <laughs> exactly. You can talk marketing. <laughs> it depends on the conversation, doesn't right. it? <laughs> and we will talk marketing once I get a sponsor and I can afford you. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, everyone, uh, be well. Be nice out there. <laughs>